leave the church Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio I pray that your faith have failed you not I pray that you know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus Is closer than he ever have been Even than when we first believed And I pray that you know he loves us greatly And he's coming back for all those who bear his name faithfully And all those who are eagerly waiting to see him Church, let's remember It's time for us to repent For the kingdom of heaven is at hand And church, we're not waiting for the end time to get here Because the end is now Yes, beloved We're not waiting on the end time to get here Because the end is now Well, good to gather with you again, brothers and sisters. Good to gather with you again. Um, I pray all is well um, um, with you and your families. Um, I pray um, that in all things and through all three, um, um, through all things, through our situation, through our circumstances, we being shaped for his glory. And what I mean by shaped for his glory, meaning to look like him in character and also being shaped for glory, being shaped so we can enter that rest, enter that eternal house of God. Jesus, man. So church, I just pray that salvation have been giving you comfort through his spirit. Jesus, I pray that salvation have been giving you comfort through his spirit because that salvation causes us to rest in his presence. Jesus, man. Church, I have a word for you today. I have a word for you today. And um, it's a heavy meal. Um, so I hope you brought your fork and your knife. <laughs> Uh, to slice down this meat, what we're going to eat today together. <laughs> and um, uh, let's dive into the word, church. Let's dive into the word. Oh, excuse me. First of all, let's pray first and um, allow the Holy Spirit to uh, massage our hearts and get our hearts into a place to receive the word of God because we need our heart to be saturated because we face trials daily. Okay, so let's pray. Dear heavenly and wise Father, bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Father, you are so glorious. Forgive us of our sin. We repent, Lord. Draw near to us, please, Lord. Help our hearts, Lord, and our brokenness, Lord, because, Lord, some of us, Lord, are in a street with broken glass, Lord, all around us, Lord. Some of our hearts are like a street with broken glass, Lord, where we feel like we can't walk nowhere without being cut. 
But Lord, we pray today that in your presence, we will find hope in your presence. We will find comfort in your presence. We will find deliverance in your presence. We will find healing because your truth is a healing a healing mechanism for us. And we pray, Lord, that your word will manis- manifest a fire in our heart for your will that it strips us from every worry in this world. And Lord, we just pray that we will, get, we will unite with you like we ever have before. Like we never have before, Lord. We pray that um, we will be so deep in your presence, Lord, that it feel like a cloud is a pillow to us. Lord, we pray that your presence will be a pillow to us, Lord. Your heart will be equipped for our spirit, Lord. for our feet that lead us to your glory Lord we need you so much we need you so bad we can't live without you and we need your living water today we need your word today we need your life today Lord we need to be awakened by your glory by the power of your presence by the mightiness of your spirit through the testimony of your son Jesus and we pray that we will allow the Holy Spirit to run free in our heart to testify the truth of our Lord today that we may draw closer, closer to him, Lord. Because he stretched himself out for us, Lord. Lord God, you gave yourself a way that we may be free, Lord. Give your word today away to us freely that we might be free because in your word, the Lord reveals, your word reveals the cross, Lord. Let today your word reveal the cross in our heart Lord, that we may be set free from the combination of sin, the combination of worry, and the combination of shame, Lord. And that today, Lord, we turn back to the truth, Lord, because we have encountered your presence through your spirit, Lord Jesus. We love you, and we need you so, so much. Thank you. precious, holy, and matchless name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Man, boy, boy. Man, you have such a hard time coming out of prayer sometimes, man. I'm telling you, man. His presence is everything, man. You, he'll, he'll be giving you a word to speak, man. You get in prayer with him. You don't even want to speak, man. You're like, Lord, man, daddy, I don't want to come out of prayer. I don't want to come out of prayer. He said, look, baby, go ahead and speak. It's okay. You can come back. <laughs> I'm with you right now, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Prayer, man, it's, it's amazing, man, how God give us Jesus freedom in prayer. Oh, Because a lot of time, church, man, when I be ready to speak, man, you know, sometimes I, I can be going through stuff in my heart, man. I could go through heaviness in my heart, man, and just encounter his presence, man. And it sometimes when, even when I'm praying before I speak, I be getting free at the same time. Man. Even when I'm praying before I speak, he be delivering me at the same time. He said, when you give, you receive. See, a lot of time when when uh, men of God that are led by the spirit of God they get attacked too. You know, we go through trials too. 
And sometime when we giving y'all a word, God be delivering us by this same word. Why? Because the Lord in that moment, the Lord also teaches us if we're led by his spirit, how to practice what we preach. So when we speak to others, we actually being delivered ourselves. Oh, man. Why? Because the Holy Spirit doing the work and not the man. Oh, man. Jesus, man. Let's get into this word, church, man. Let's get into this word, man. Now, man. Man, um. There's one more, there's the most, this is the most important thing that you will ever encounter in your life. This is the most important thing that you should seek in your life. And this is the most important thing you can't do without in, 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 in this life. Many people try to do without it. Many people throw it up under the rug, throw it away, sweep it away, or don't cherish it. But the truth of the matter is when all of it is said and done, this is the only thing that will stand. And this is the only thing that will keep you and cause you to enter into eternal life. This one thing is necessary and it is very overlooked and disregarded as it's not treasure. But this one thing should be held at high priority. This one thing is salvation this one thing is salvation because salvation in christ jesus in christ alone is our hope for glory in our heart now but is our hope for glory to enter that glory to come okay and this glory keeps us from deception this glory keeps us from the destruction to come um in a few years and this glory keeps us from the deception and the destruction that we'll face daily through the things that are come at us um, through the brokenness of this world. Okay. This salvation keeps us from all things because this salvation have delivered us from all things in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But also there is a greater, there is a something else greater that this salvation do. And that is, it brings us into a right place in a relationship with God Almighty. Because before this, before this sacrifice, man could not enter the presence of God. Man could not be connected with God because sin was a barrier, was a blockade between God and man. But Christ Jesus in his love, who is God, gave himself a way to remove that barrier so man could be in a great relationship with God Almighty back into this one place right back into our true identity as God fashioned us to be and that identity is a child of God Man. and I remember waking up in a vision and, and, and the man of God was in the vision it was a little child before him that had came from heaven Man. and the little child stood before the man of God and said you are in heaven like us oh man so what the spirit of the Lord was reminding and revealing and showing the man of God in the vision that you have a place in heaven because you are a child of God. And church, we have a place in heaven because we are children of God and we must take serious our salvation because if we are in salvation, then we should be led by the spirit of God because the spirit of God makes us children of God. And as we are children of God, we are heirs of salvation because we have been made sons through the testimony of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay. And. Excuse me. And as and as I and as I see this. And as I see this and as we get an understanding in this understanding, this we must reflect his glory in this matter. Church, I was sitting on the bed the other day with my children. I was laying down. I was loving them. Them. And we were just playing and stuff like that, laughing. I'm um, a little boy. I'm a little girl. Okay. And um, and as I sit on the bed with them, I begin to notice the features that they have in their face. Oh, man. I began to notice that my son looked like me and my daughter uh, looked like my wife. And I began to, and I began to look at how their character their uh, excuse me I, I, I start to, to look at the resemblance of how they look like they father and they mother oh, 
how the hands of God formed them in the womb to look like their parents. And I began to get a revelation that the Lord gave, give us our, uh, the Lord give us our children and everything, our job from our children, everything to give us a revelation by him. We have a job. We have a family all to do one thing to give us more revelation about our father in heaven. And through Christ Jesus, by his spirit, as we have our children, our job, everything we operate in this life becomes a classroom for his glory that teaches us about him. And as I began to look at my children, the father, through through the Lord Jesus, began to speak to me by his spirit and say, began to say, son, that's how I look at my children in the earth. That I formed them in a mother womb. Therefore, they should bear witness. Therefore, they should look like me in a character. When I look at them, I should smile because I see the resemblance of me in them. Oh, man. And and um, as I look at this, the Lord, he, he says, son, when a child is born, men and women and uh, men and women in their earthly form, they say they might say he looked like his dad or she looked like his father. That is a great term that you guys use when a child is buried in his life in the earth that y'all use that. They look like his father or they look like or they look like their mother. Okay. And he says, son, when I look in the earth, I like to see the same thing. When I look in the earth, I like to see my children reflect, reflecting my glory. So when the world see them, they say, you know what? They look like Jesus. You know what? They look like my child. Oh, man. They look like my child. Because when we are baptizing Jesus, when we are covering his righteousness, their father said, they look like my child. You know what? They look like my children. Oh, man. What do we say, church? The father in heaven said, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Through his son, Christ Jesus, we are reborn in the spirit by the Holy Spirit that makes us children of God. If unto us who are earthly love to see our children look like us, right, to look like us and bear our image, how much more does the living God, the father of lights, rejoice when he see us uh, bearing his image by living by his righteousness of his son and that son is Christ Jesus our Savior. Let me repeat that. If us who are earthly love to see our children look like us and bear our image, how much more does the living God, the father of lights, the father of lights rejoice when he see us bear his image by the living hope, by the righteousness of his son, Christ Jesus. OK. Very serious, very serious church. Very serious. OK. And. And as. And as uh, as we look at this, it brings us to a, it brings us to a revelation that if we are children of God, then we are child of the free woman and not the slave woman. Oh, man. And when we when we hear this, we're like, "What do you mean, brother, by a, a child?" Of the free woman and a child of the slave woman. Okay. So uh our brother Paul in the book book of uh Galatians 4 were referring back, referring back to a time uh between Hagar and um Sarah. Okay. Now, at first God had told Abraham that he was gonna bear him a son. <clears throat> But Abraham got impatient and started trying to do his own thing. Um, so he listened to his wife and them, um, and, and, and he bared a son with Hagar. But that wasn't the promise. 
Now, do they know even though Abraham made a mistake, God grace gracefully forgiven him, and God still finished what he said he would because God worked on come back for it. Now, no matter how many times we fall, when God says something, it's done. Okay. Now, now, and in that, we should never take that as a sign of weakness or take it for granted, but take it as a sign of mercy. Jesus, man. Because he is holy. Okay. So now you got Galatian, you got Paul referenced elation with Abraham, and Abraham's supposed to wait, but he had a child with Hagar instead of the child he had a child with Hagar um, but later he had a child with Sarah and Hagar was the handmaid was the servant of Sarah Hagar was the servant of Sarah so in a sense in a sense she was the slave woman looking from a place of the slave woman. But Sarah, who was the master over the woman, Abraham, who was the master over the woman, had a son called Isaac, who was free because he was not under a slave man. Oh, because he was not under slave man. And so we are that child of Sarah. We, we come from um, um, the lineage of Isaac, right? The child of the free woman, right? The child of the free woman, because Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had the twelve sons of Israel. Judah was one of them who Christ Jesus came. Okay, so we are. We come through that seed that came through Isaac. The next seed, of, seed is Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we are children of the free woman and not the slave woman. Okay. So this is also when we look at it from that perspective and that lens, what God is showing us. That also is a parallel image of how sin works in this life. Okay. Because notice that. Because they disobeyed God, they had a child out of God's will. Okay. Now, God still used that for his glory. But they had a child out of a place of disobedience because he told them to wait and they did not. Okay. Okay. God told us not to eat of that tree in the garden. And we fell out of disobedience. And because we fell, we fell into a place of sin. Okay. And because we fell into a place of sin, the Bible said, the Lord Jesus said, whoever sins is a slave to sin. But whoever believes in the son, the son shall set them free indeed. Jesus. So, like so, if we, uh, if, like so, if we sin, we're slave to sin. Therefore, if we come under obedience out of a slave of the free child, then that free child makes us free. And that child of God is Christ Jesus who sets us free from all condemnation. Okay? So, let's back this up. So, we are a children of the free woman. We are a children. We are children of... Of the free seed, Christ Jesus, our Lord, that sets us free from all condemnation. Okay. So this is a very important about salvation, about our identity in Christ, because our identity in Christ sets, it sets us free from the enslavement of sin. Okay. Why? Because if we are led by the spirit of God, then we are children, we are children of freedom because Christ is free. Okay. We're no longer slave of the flesh, but we're slave of the spirit that sets us free. So as we look at what our Paul brother did, he was referring to the flesh and the spirit because Abraham had a child 
out of disobedience, they had that child out of flesh. But when they had the child of the promise, they had a child of the spirit. Jesus, God. So like so today, church, when we enter into salvation, we're no longer children of the flesh. We're no longer slaves of the flesh, but we are children of the spirit because we have been born by the spirit. Therefore, we should hold our salvation at a higher regard because that salvation brings us back into our identity with Christ. And it also. Give us. Freedom and liberty. And brings us into a relationship with God. That we will be children and no longer slaves of sin. Jesus, man. Okay. So as we get an understanding that we are children, we must also get an understanding of, of why it's important to be a child of God and to be in this salvation. Because when Jesus came for this salvation, yes, he came to bring us into, yes, he came because he loved us. That was the number one. Two, he also came because he wanted us to be back in right relationship with him. Three, he also knew the importance of bring us back into relationship with him. Because if he, if we did not come back into relationship with him, we would face the judgment and the wrath of God that we would, that we deserve for disobeying the commandments of God because God is holy. So this salvation was given because God loved us. And in this salvation, Jesus brought us back into a place as a child of God, but also this salvation keeps us from the judgment of God. Let's talk about it. In Isaiah 4, 5, judgment, God said judgment was coming for the Lord. Re repeat what he said. He said, declare in Judah, proclaim in Jerusalem and say, blow the ram's horn throughout the land. Cry out loudly and say, assemble yourself and let's flee to the fortified cities. Man, God, me. Lift up a signal flag toward Zion. Run for cover. Don't stand still for I am bringing a disaster from the north. A great description. A lion has gone up from his thicket. A destroyer of the nation has set out. He has left his lair to make your land a waste. Your cities will be reduced to uninhabited ruins. Because of this, put on sackcloth mourning well, for the Lord's burning anger has turned away from us. Jesus. Listen. Listen. The Lord destruction is coming upon all those. That are unrighteous. Okay. The great tribulation is not God's judgment. That is Satan persecuting the church. That's not God's wrath. God's wrath is after that in the book of Revelation. When he pull out his bowls. When he pull out his. It's going to be worldwide against all of those. Who have been unrighteous. This is what salvation saves us from. Okay. His salvation keeps us. From being led astray daily. It keeps us from being deceived through the great tribulation. But it keeps us from the wrath that will be poured out. His judgment poured out on all those. From all those. For all from all those. For all those who have been unrighteous. Look what he said. It said, let in and, and, and judge it says Jeremiah 4. Uh, it said 5. It said, Declare to Judah, proclaim to Jerusalem this today. Church, the land is being shaken greatly. And today I appeal to you, brothers and sisters. I'm, cry I'm crying out for you. And I'm also crying out against the city. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. That. That. The Lord is crying out to his bride to come back into a place of repentance, to come back to the rightful place in him. And all those who don't know him come into a place with him. Right. Because the Lord is blowing his horn through his service to say, come to me. Come to me. Come back into your rightful place as a child. Come back into your identity and uh, identity in me because my judgment have already been made, made known to you. To my scripture, my judgment have already been made known through my son, Christ Jesus. And there's no stopping my judgment when my hammer is laid down. And my hammer is laid down. The mandate for judgment have already been set for those that are unrighteous. So my hammer is already laid down. But I'm telling you to come into a place 
of repentance that you may escape my judgment by coming back into a rightful place with me. I am blowing my horn through my service. You know what my horn is? I am blowing my words. I am breathing my words. I am breathing my life to you. I am crying out loudly to you through my spirits for you to assemble yourselves for my glory. For you to assemble myself because you know that I am holy. And because you know that I am holy, that should cause you to respect my name because you know who I am. And you know I am love, but you know my justice is love and my truth is love and also my judgment in love. So I'll cry out to you to run back to and flee to this fortified city. And the Lord Jesus said, I am that fortified city. I am that fortified city. Run to this fortified city. Right. Lift up a flag. You know what? Lift up, lift up my word, lift up my sacrifice to everyone that they may see that they need to run to this fortified city. They need to run to this cover. Don't stand still. Don't be idle. Don't conform to this world. Lift up a signal. My watchman raised up, lift up a lift up a declaration declaration of my word. For everyone to take cover, to run in me, to live in my testimony, because I am a fortified city. Don't stand still. For I am bringing disaster and destruction on all those who have mocked my name, who have this, who have um, not lived the way I have told them to, who have misrepresented me because I have given them their identity through my sacrifice that they may be able to walk with me. And if they reject it by being disobedient or not living the way I told them to, then they have mocked what I have given them. Oh, man. Jesus. And he said, I am the great lion. Right. I have raised up for my I have raised up for my throne. I am coming at the mandate that the father have sent me, sent me. And our and every eye shall see me and behold my glory. Those who have not been right will run and hide into the mountain, but they can't hide from me because I'm everywhere. Therefore, run unto me because I am the fortified city. Christ Jesus must say my love is a strong foundation. Christ Jesus said. And my love is a fortified city. My salvation is a fortified city. Therefore, turn to a place. A repentance. Turn to a place of mourning. Turn to a place of mourning. Meaning, turn to a place to say, Lord, I need you. I'm poor in spirit. I need your hope. I need your glory. I mourn because of what I've done. I mourn because of what I've did. And I need you to save me from my own destruction. Turn to a place of humility. So the Lord said, turn back and repent. Because they said, God's godly sorrow leads to Repentance and the Lord said, Blessed are those who mourn, those that mourn, meaning those that grieve over sin, those that grieve over their own sin, those that grieve because they know that Jesus, that they grieve because they don't want to sin against their Lord, and they know that the only way that they can be saved is through the sacrifice of the Lord. So he said, Blessed are those who mourn of their sin because they mourn, not because it just hurt them, but they know sin hurt my heart. So blessed are them that mourn because I know because they mourn over sin, they will turn to life in me. Jesus, man. He said, mourning well. The Lord's burning anger has been turned away from us. The Lord Jesus anger, his his um, his judgment will turn away from all those who have came back into their right identity, their relationship with God, because your relationship with God revealed the identity of God. And that identity is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as we are in that identity, we are seen as children of God in the sight of the Father in heaven. And because we are children, it testifies that we have loved him. And if we love him, the Father love us in heaven because we have believed in him and his son. Jesus, man. So the Lord said, mourn well because his anger, excuse me, his anger will turn away from the, excuse me, his anger will turn away from all those who have received his testimony, but his anger will not turn from those 
who have not received this testimony. They say, for the Lord, this right here said, for the Lord's burning anger has not turned away from us. Right here in Jeremiah 4, 5, God was, God is bringing destruction on those who have disobeyed him. And he, and he was not turning away from it. It was increasing because they kept being disobedient. They did not listen. And once his hammer was laid down, it was laid down. Church, God, Jesus Christ, when he hit the cross, have judged this world. God hammer is laid down. He clearly drew a line in the sand that those that on the side of Christ would be turned, would, would, would not, would not um, experience his realm. But those on the other side of that line would experience his hell because the, the testimony of Christ Jesus judged this world by the standard of God who will be covered and who will see his, who will receive his wrath. And those that on the other side of the line, his wrath would not turn away because his helmet have already been laid down. It said right here, flee into that fortified city. That is the salvation of Christ Jesus. Because if we do not flee into that fortified city. His wrath will not be turned away. His wrath will not be turned away. Why is this important, church? Because if we live according to the salvation that we have received, then we will escape this. What do we say, church? Let us obey salvation that we may be children of God. And as we are children, we experience his love, his mercy. By living according to his spirit through the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And we may escape his judgment and his wrath. Okay. God love us. He want none of us to perish. He don't want none of us to fall victim to sin. He don't want none of us to see his destruction. So therefore he gave himself the way on the cross that we may be saved by living as a child of God. But we also know God is holy. And we know there is no separate separating his holiness from his love because they are all one what do we say church let us obey the gospel that we may remain in his love and that love keeps us from condemnation and his judgments okay because god is holy and he must be respected okay so this is very important church it's very important and as we get an understanding of this, what keeps us from conforming to this world? What keeps us from um, conforming to this world and doing the things of God? A great area where we fall at church is when we live to please man instead of God. Okay, because when we live to please man and see, we can look at it from two perspectives, because a lot of time we think we. When we say live to please man, we look at that as, okay, I'm not to live to please other people. Well, what we do is, what we do is, this is what we do. We'll live to not, when we look at it from that perspective, we'll, when we look at it from that perspective only, what we'll do is we'll live, we'll live not pleasing other people, but end up pleasing ourselves and still be in a place of not pleasing God. So when we look at it um, from that, when we, so we can't look at it from the lens, I'm not just going to please other people. And then fall into the place of pleasing ourselves. But when it said God said, "Live not to please, live, let us not live to please man," what He was also saying is not live to not live to please other people, but also not to live to please yourself. Because we are man. When God said live to please man, He was not just talking about the people you see around you, but He was talking about yourself. Oh, man. He was talking about you as well. He was not just talking about people around you, but he was talking about you yourself. He said it's not wise for man to lead to lean on his own understanding. Well, he was not just talking about other people, but he was talking about us. Okay. So when God said, "Let us not live to please man," he was talking about live not to please, uh, live not to please um, other people or yourself, but to live to please me. And what I said, live not to please other people, not to show love and kindness to other people because Jesus commanded us to. But when it said live to please man, meaning don't live this life looking for praise and glory for man, looking for man to confirm you, looking for man to do, to looking for man as your hope. Because God is your hope. 
When you live to ple- when you live for man as your hope, then you will do everything that is in man flesh that will lead you straight from God. Why? Because only hope is found in God, only truth is found in God. And if we want to please that truth, we must live by that truth and we must live to please God and not man. Okay. So let us let us not live to please man, but God, for if we say we live to play please for if we say um, if for if we live to please man, then we cannot be a disciple of Jesus. Our brother Paul in the book of Galatians said, if I were living to please man. Then I cannot be a servant of Christ. Listen, man, if we live to please men, then we're not walking in our rightful place as a child of God. Because Jesus, when he walked this earth as a child of God, did not walk it to please men, but he walked to please God. And as he walked to please God, he organically took care of man because the man was a desire of God heart. So as we live to please God, we will take care of his people naturally because his people is his desire of his heart. But we have to keep it in the right perspective. And we have to keep it from a place that I'm serving God and not man. And as I serve God, he will point me to his people, not me serving his people. And they point me to God because I'm going to get a misconception because I'm trusting man. I'm trusting man to give me a revelation of God instead of the spirit who is God giving me a revelation about him. Oh, man. Godly, man. Why? Because the spirit, the only one knows the mind of God. Okay. Okay. So if we're not, if we're living to please man, we're not even worthy to be a disciple because Jesus said, I want all of you and not a portion. Jesus. Okay. Let us not be a slave to Christ Jesus by our lips, but let us be slaves to Christ by the way we live according to his testimony, which is the gospel. Jesus. Let us not serve God with lip service, who is Christ, but serve him by the way we live. So, church, let us not be a slave to Christ with lip service, but let us be a slave to Christ by we by, by the way we live according to his testimony, which is the gospel, right? To his sacrifice on the cross. Okay. Okay. So let us live as slaves to Christ according to the te- to his testimony, which is the gospel, in full obedience, in full acceptance, right? Which is God will and his purpose for all men. And that purpose is for man to be in a relationship with him through the testimony of Christ Jesus, our Lord, which is the power of God and the plan of salvation that was issued and commanded and constructed and created by the very hands of Almighty God. Okay. And as we get an understanding of this church, the Lord Jesus gave us a good gift by being, gave us a good gift through his testimony. Christ Jesus is that gift and, 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 and through that gift. Excuse me, Christ, through the salvation of Christ Jesus, he gave us a good gift. And that gift is the promise of his spirit, Jesus. And let us not neglect the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit helps us and enable us to obey the will of God. Church, let us not neglect such a uh, precious gift, the Holy Spirit. He is so sweet. He is so kind. He's comforting. He loves us so, so much. But we also can grieve his heart. Just spending time with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the greatest person we will ever know. He is so loving, man. He sees us when we fall. He sees us when we make mistakes. That's why it's also important to repent, live a life of repentance. Because as I sit here right now, it brings water to my eyes because God loves us so much. He knows that we will fall, but we must live by repentance and say, Lord, I want to turn. I want to turn. I want, I don't want to keep hurting your heart because when we don't do that, we fall into a place of pride and just doing whatever we want to his heart. <sighs> See, when you repent, we saying, dad, look, I'm not going to act like I did not hurt your heart. I'm not, do you know how it feel when like, if you ever been in a marriage or somebody uh, you love close to you hurt you? And they don't say you and they don't say they sorry. Now, as in Christ, we forgive them anyway. But imagine how you feel when that pain initially happened. You're like, man, they hurt me. They ain't even acknowledge what they did. I forgive them. But man, they ain't even they ain't even say they sorry. Now, duly note, we have to forgive them because God said, forgive and you shall be forgiven. But I want you to sh- I want to show you how it feels when somebody uh, wound you and they don't acknowledge what they have done. Well, like so God have already forgiven us through his son, but we must repent and acknowledge what we have done to him 
that we may receive that forgiveness because sin demands a repayment. And as we live a life of repentance, we live in obedience through salvation because that life of repentance also testified that we live in the gospel because the gospel came through repentance. OK, repentance lead us to the salvation of Christ, which is the gospel. OK, and, and uh, well, when we, let, me, let me say it this way. When we come to repentance, it live us, it lead us to salvation that is in the gospel. And as we live a life of repentance, it helps us to remain in the gospel because that repentance keeps us under the grace of God and reverence in who he is because we acknowledge that we need his mercy. Jesus, man. Man. OK. So. So let us not grieve the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is everywhere at all time. He's on all flesh. So you think about that's why man won't escape the judgment of God. Won't man everything we do in the dark is seen. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is right there. I'm telling you, when you get a conscious mind, a conscious awareness of that, the Holy Spirit is there the whole time, it'll really help you walk right with God. If you know that he's in the room with you, he's everywhere with you. When you go to the grocery store, when you're in your car, when you're in your bedroom, right? When you walk in your bathroom, when you get a revelation that Christ Jesus is always there through the spirit, it give you a, it, 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 it also, I give you a revelation of comfort that God is always watching me. I ain't got to worry about, uh, I ain't got to worry about nothing coming against me because God is always here to carry me through every trial. It give you a sign of comfort, but it also should give you a sign. It also give, should give you a uh a place of reverence in your heart because his glory that is at at all places at all time give me comfort because i know he'll save me from all destruction but it also give me a place of reverence in my heart that i know he's watching me at all time as well meaning he's going to come for me but also he's watching me as well which means i need to respect him because if i don't live a life of repentance then i can face his judgment why because god sees everything the Holy Spirit is so sweet, man. He got such a big heart. He's so loving. He's so kind. He speak life over us. He speak truth to us. He pick us up when we fall. He wipe our tears when we crying. He he always meant it to us. Keep going, child. Keep pressing. I love you. Keep moving. Keep moving. He does all these things for us. So only imagine how it makes him feel when we don't repent and he know we just sinned against him. When we don't repent, when we teach things that shouldn't not be taught, when we live in error and continue to live in that error and we don't repent. The Bible said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And we grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't live a life of repentance. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't live a life of repentance because he's there all day and he know that they need to repent. He know that we need to repent. He know that the church need to repent. He know that it's a lot of things that we've done that. We need to come and repent for. And the whole time we're not living the right for repentance. He just sitting there. He's grieved. He's grieved. Why? Because I love them. And they don't know that what they, they and this is the tough part because some of us know what we're doing and still in pride. Don't repent. Oh man. Woe to us, man. Woe to us if we don't repent, man. And also. The Bible tells us that if us who have been received Christ uh, squash and make it in, how much more for those who have not accepted him? So it's also a call for those who have not believed. Who, who have not believed that God is calling, um, um, calling, calling you into a place as well to receive Christ and to come into a relationship with God. OK, because he loves you. Church. We know better. We know better and we should do better. We know the spirit. We have encountered the presence of God. We know how we should operate. The Holy Spirit is so sweet, man. We should not box him in or cast him aside, man. It hurt. It's grieving. It even scary, too, because the Holy Spirit is God. It's grieving, man. We should obey the spirit of God because he is the only one who helps and enables us to obey the will of God. Okay. Okay. What was it prophesied in the book of Zechariah? In Zechariah, it said, "Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit." That means, church, everything we do concerning the will of God was because of God and not not man. Jesus. That means 
a man can never physically carry out nothing from God because God is spirit. And the only way man can carry out anything for God is by his spirit, the Holy Spirit that is, because only God mightiness that is in his spirit can carry out a mighty will like his. There is no mightiness in man apart from God. Why? Because the only way man can carry out the will of God is if he have the mighty power of the Holy Spirit in him who can do the work for him. And as he do the, the Holy Spirit do the work for him, he just include that man in it so he can experience the father and know more about him. As a relationship with the father as his child and we're in a relationship at, with the father as him being the father child. OK. Very important church, very important church. So, church, what do we say? We say the testimony of Christ Jesus is a holy covenant. We hear in the Old Testament that it was promised, it was promised, it was promised over many years that the Messiah would come. And as we read the scripture in the book of Exodus, the 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 the, the, the when we was when, when we was under the law, then the law was a holy covenant. Well, in, in, in Christ Jesus, God gave us a new covenant and God is holy. So any covenant that come from God is holy. So the gospel of Christ Jesus is a new covenant. The gospel of Christ Jesus is a holy covenant from God to us. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let us not abuse the holy covenant. Let us not break that holy covenant because the same way they broke the law in the Old Testament and face judgment of God the same way it is with us that who are up under the season of grace. If we break the grace of that covenant, we will face the judgment of God because we did not remain in his holy covenant. Christ Jesus testimony. Oh, Jesus is such a loving, holy covenant. But in that holy covenant, there is justice. There is just and judgment unto all men because the testimony of Christ Jesus is the standard of God. And whenever there is a standard, that means there, that means you have to live by it. And if you don't live by that standard, there's consequence, there's consequences. And there's consequences when we don't live by it, is eternal damnation. Okay. So Christ Jesus testimony is a holy covenant. OK, and that holy covenant brings us joy, bring us peace, bring us hope, carry us through our problem, carry us through our situation, bring us back into a place of God where he expresses love for us, expresses life to us, expresses truth to us, expresses his love to us, cover us, shape us, mold us, break us, teach us, show us. And bring us into a greater revelation who he is that we may experience joy in him forever. So in that covenant. Is everything we need for hope. And there is no hope outside of that holy covenant. And that holy covenant must be obeyed. Okay. And that holy covenant is the gospel. What do we say, church? Let us obey the gospel that we may be heirs of salvation and finish the race that God has set before us. Church, this is all I have for you today. This is all I have for you today. Um, well, no, it's not. I'm sorry, church. Um, I have also an update for you. I take it back. I got an update for you. Um, it was a leader in the Middle East was on the news. It's a prophecy update. It was a leader in the Middle East on the news said, uh, that we are in turbulent times. And see, a lot of times the leaders in this world today don't even know what they're speaking because they don't understand that this world, this that, that God is in control of all things, the one and only God, Christ Jesus. They don't understand that the Holy Scriptures is absolutely accurate and absolutely true that God have prophesied since the foundation of this world. Everything man would do in their evil deeds because man know, man know, uh, I mean, God know. Every deed of man and everything in their heart. So when a lot of time when people lead us in a new speaker, they don't know that God have already spoken what they're going to do before they do it. Why? Because God know the deeds of man. God don't cause God don't call evil because it is impossible for God to tempt man with evil because God is 100 percent pure. But God know God knows man's heart. So he through his prophets and through his servant, he prophesied everything man would do from their own heart. Jesus, man.
So this leader said that we are in turbulent times. And they're in and see, and what he what, what he's saying, what, what what he don't know what he's saying, he said we are in turbulent time. And spiritually speaking, what he's what, what is going on in spirit is that we are in the build up to the greatest tribulation that we are uh ever seen. Think about on an airplane, there's turbulent times, all right? On the airplane, there could be mild turbulence, but I'd also I'll be turbulence where the plane is crashing. Well, God said, I have set a mandate, right? This world is like being on a plane, okay? And there is turbulence on a plane where it might rock the plane, but it also turbulence that would send the plane crashing down. Mm-hmm. I remember waking up in a vision that it was man and it was, it was people on this plane. It was people on this plane from different religion, okay? There was um uh, there were people on the plane from different religion, whether they, um uh Muslim or Muslim, different other peoples, all on this plane. It was different people from different religion, all on this plane. Okay, okay, and and there was people that believed in Jesus on the plane that believed in Jesus on the plane. Okay, so this plane is rocking. This plane is uh uh, uh rocking, but everybody on the plane, everybody that believed in Jesus, had a parachute. So the plane began to crash. The plane began to crash. And those that believed in Jesus jumped off the plane that was going to crash. You know what? They jumped off into the fortified city and they parachuted to safety. But everybody that did not believe was left on this plane and that plane crashed. Well, that plane represent this earth. And God said, you know what? I set a mandate for this plane to be abolished. I set a mandate for this plane to crash. You know what? For this plane to be judged by fire from heaven. And everybody that is in me and my son, right? Because whoever is in the son is in the father because the father and son are one. Okay. Okay. So the Lord said, if you, the father said, if you believe my son, then you will be safe. Okay. So the Lord have set a mandate for this earth. Okay. And everybody that in my son will parachute to safety. Why? Because my blood covered them. And that blood come from my son, Christ Jesus. Okay. Our Lord. Okay. So the leader was on the news looking at everything that is going on in the Middle East, the wars and everything that is happening. And he said, man, we are in turbulent times. Church, I appeal to you. This, the man spoke this on national news that we are in turbulent times. But what they don't see is, see, because when you're not filled with the spirit, you can't see what is going on in the spirit. But when you read the Holy Bible, it can tell you what is going on. What man can't see in the spirit because God loved his children. He said, I reveal these things to you before they happen. So when you when it happen, you'll know that I am who I say I am. And I don't let I don't let nothing happen unless I reveal it to my service first. Well, we are children of God. We have service of Christ Jesus, our Lord. He have revealed what is going to happen before it happened through the prophecies of the Bible. So as this lever said that we are in turbulent times, what is saying in the scripture? What he's saying in the scripture that we are in the build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen. We are in the build up to the, the greatest tribulation that will be a three and a half year period. We are in the build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen that will last three and a half years and then Christ Jesus will come. We are in the build up to the greatest tribulation um, this world have ever seen. We are in the build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen. Okay. In the book of Daniel, it talks about a a a a a, a seven year period. Church, we are we are in that season. We are in that season. We are in the build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen. We're in that season, church. We're in that season, and that season is coming to fruition. That season is here, and we are in the build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen. The Bible said when they holler peace and safety, sudden destruction will come. Look at how the whole world right now is hollering peace. You got Ching P and China want to work out peace. You got America want to work out peace. Matter of fact, they're having a peace. They're supposed to be having on Tuesday a peace and um, safety, a peace and security conference um, summit in Bahrain. So you got this whole world. Uh, you got Putin, Russia. Talking about teasing, uh, peace. All of these nations was in the book of Daniel. 
Daniel 7 4 talks about Russia, America, and every and, and, and um Great Britain, right? Germany. It talks about all these countries right now. You got Germany, you got Great Britain, you got Russia, you got America. And Daniel 7 4, it talk Daniel 7 4, it talks about all of these countries, what we see right now that is talking about peace. And you can see that it said that the Antichrist will make peace with many. You see the, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And you can see all the countries around the world right now hollering peace. But the Lord said when they holler peace, sudden destruction will come. And as we look at they will holler peace and sudden destruction will come. You got a leader saying we are in turbulent times. Why? Because we the scripture tells us that we are in the build up to the greatest tribulation. This world I've ever seen. So what do we say, church? What will make us say? What do we say after this prophecy? We say, let us walk into our identity of Christ that we might find safety in this fortified city by walking in a loving relationship with God that keeps us from destruction daily and also the destruction that's going to come because of the evil deeds of man. Okay. The book of Revelation said, release the four angels that were bound in the great Euphrates River. It said that we have an accuser, which is Satan. He's going to, there's a fight that will be broke out, that will break out in heaven. Satan's going to be booted. Satan's going to be booted from heaven, banned to the earth. He no longer can, he no longer can go back and forth. He always go trying to accuse us, try to accuse us to God. Look at what they're doing. Remember Job, remember Job, the book of Job, how Satan would try to accuse Job. He tried to accuse us the same way, but he will be banned from heaven where he no longer had access to accuse. OK. And he's going to be and, 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 and he's going to come against the church. OK. OK. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the truth. Christ Jesus, the great king, got our back. and He oversees all glory and we don't have to fear nothing. Why? Because we already have the victory. Why is this important? Because if we walk in our salvation. And if we walk in our identity in Christ Jesus, if we walk in his glory, then nothing can harm us spiritually. Why? Because our salvation, our identity in Christ reveals, reveals his glory. It keeps us, it shaped us to be children of God. So this is important, church, because this is the hour that we are in. We want to walk in salvation because a loving God gave his self away. That's the main reason we do it, because he loved us so much. And second, this same love for him, the same love that he given us, that is perfected in us through him, his son. That love keeps us daily and also from the things in this dark hour to come. So it's very important that we do one thing, church. Oh, Obey the gospel. Church, this is all I have for you. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. And I pray that it keeps you from all destruction, all unrighteousness, and give you a greater revelation of how Christ Jesus loves us so, so much. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your truth. And we thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We pray that you guide us. We pray that you keep us. And we pray that you reveal your glory to us, Lord, daily. Shower us with your presence. Redeem us by your truth. Sanctify us by your truth. Guide us into the way of life by living according to your spirit that we may be heirs of salvation and dwell with you forever. Daddy, we need you. We love you and we want to be with you forever. Keep us in your son and may we forever live a life of repentance to reveal your name. We repent. We, are, we repent. We apologize. We're sorry. And we pray that we please your heart, daddy. We want to, we want to let you know that you're awesome. And you're a great daddy to us. Your great daddy to us. Thank you for adopting us through your son, Jesus. Thank you for making us your children. Thank you for being our daddy. Like you, you, you are holy God. You don't have to be a father. You did not have to redeem us. You don't have to. We was we were sinners, and yet you died for us, Lord. You did not have to do that, but you redeemed us 
from that sinful state that we may be children. Oh, why? Because you loved us greatly and you did not want to leave us as orphans. You did not want to leave us fatherless, but in your heart, you said, man, I want them. Jesus, man. Daddy, we want you too. We want you too. Please help us to get to you that we may experience you forever. In your son, Jesus, precious and mighty name, we pray and believe. Church, um, excuse me. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer to me. Say, dear Lord, I thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Man, if you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. The scripture said, whenever a sinner repents, heaven rejoices. If I like the, the story of the prodigal uh, son and the father, the son left his father's house out of disobedience. But when the father came, he rejoiced that his son came home and they celebrated. Well, like so. When we sin, we ran away from God. Jesus. But now we but now when we accept Jesus, we come back to him and his arms is wide open, rejoicing to receive us into his home. And today the father in heaven said, welcome home, children. Welcome home, children. I missed you. Welcome home. Welcome home. Congratulations. Heaven is celebrating. They're rejoicing because you chose to come. You chose to accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And never you repent, heaven rejoices. So welcome to the kingdom of God. Now get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And as you receive, if you as you have received the Holy, as you have received the Holy Spirit through that salvation accept of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will build you up into a Christ. He will grow you in Christ Jesus. And he also will lead you to people who are led by the spirit of God, because those that are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. And they will help you grow in truth and community but because God himself will never alone. So if God never did it by himself, that one God is in his son and is in his spirit. So they was always in community. So if God was never alone, he could, God could not do it by himself. Neither can we. Okay. So, so me, uh, so, um, so if, let me say it, say it this way. God was never alone. Neither should we be. Okay. So allow the Holy Spirit to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to a group of believers that will teach you the truth and guide you in the truth and keep you in that truth because they love Jesus by the spirit and y'all spirit will grow in one out of unity in Christ. Okay. Because there's a lot of false teaching out there. There's a lot of people not teaching the truth. But the Holy Spirit wants to spare you from that. He will keep you from that. Just trust him. And most importantly, make sure you have a relationship with him yourself. Make sure you're reading the word, reading the Holy Bible yourself. Reading um, as you go to church and as you gather with brother, make sure you're studying with God on your own so you can prove what the perfect will of God is yourself by allowing the Holy Spirit to come alive in you and he'll uh, uh, guide your wisdom and it'll match your brothers if y'all are true in one spirit and that is a safe guard um, because y'all are operating in truth okay see so um, church this is all I have to say to you um, I pray that this word was a blessing to you well let me pray this is all the Lord have to say to you I pray that it was a blessing to you I pray that it help you grow you I pray that it grow you in the righteousness of Christ Jesus and I pray that they help you finish this race strong. Church, let's remember, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us so much. See you next time, church. Church, I pray this word was blessed to you.
Thank you for tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. Thank you for tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray that you know that our Lord is coming soon. And I pray that this word awaken you in that area, but also bring you back into a rightful place as a child of God by showing you your true identity. Because Christ is all. And church, let us remember, it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Yes, beloved. We're not waiting on the end time to get here. 